Uh, right, we're back up and running. I'm here with David Pingree. Uh, continue on with the questions. Uh, what do you feel was your best achievement in motocross, stroke, supercross, and why? Best achievement. Um, I mean, it has to be, I won four supercross races. So I think that that, if I'm looking at my whole career, I'm, I'm proud of that. Yeah. There's not a lot of guys who won four races or more Yeah. who didn't win a championship or go on to do really big things. So, I mean, it's a, it's a, um, it's rare to do, uh, yeah. you know, I got an X games medal for supermoto, which I thought was really cool. That was yeah. really fun. Cool, yeah. uh, won the Prince of Bercy in 95. Uh, that's a, that meant a lot to me. Yeah. What do you think of that race? That was quite cool. I, I always, I loved it at Bercy stadium. Um, I haven't been since they've been to the new place and I know it's bigger and, um, uh, probably a much better track, but I don't know. There was something cool and intimate about that old Bercy stadium, you know, yeah. we loved it in Europe, watching that on the TV on Eurosport. I think it was. Yeah. What did you think about the whole, I loved the tunnel bit. The straight in the tunnel. Yeah, I mean, it, it was sketchy as hell, to be really was honest. It, was it, was uh, it? One year, I, I got a little squirrely and hit a cement pillar oh, and hurt my geez. shoulder and had to had to pull out of the race. I think it was 97, maybe. Yeah. Um, but uh, it was it was just unique, you know? Yeah. And uh, yeah. there was such a cool history there going back to the 80s. And um, that, that was part of what made it so neat. It was just cool. All the Americans going over there, and it was just really cool. Yeah, they did a good job with presentation, you know. Mm, yeah. Um, Rousey, I remember Rick, maybe was it one year they had like Rick Johnson and Jeff come out in a, like a spaceship or something. Do you remember that? I mean, yeah, they yeah, just they did, did quite really a few cool things stuff. Like yeah. And one year they had like this big metal hand and maybe JMB came down in that or something. They just did it. They really went all out with the, the yeah. show. Cool. And uh, at the time, no even the supercrosses here in the U S they weren't even nearly as, as much pageantry as what he did, you know? So that was a cool event. Yeah. Very cool. Um, who were the riders you always used to have run, run-ins with and didn't particularly enjoy racing with and why? Well, Schnell, That's like I mentioned for sure. Yeah. yeah. He just pissed me off. Cause he not, not and looking back on it, what he did, I would have probably done the same thing. It just ruined my night, so I was pissed yeah. about it. Yeah, yeah. Um, other riders, who else did I have run-ins with? That's a tough one, man. I mean, like I said, every year was a little different. There was never somebody, there was never one guy that I was just always hitting, you know, <laughs> running into or having issues with. It kind of changed, you know, because I, I mean, I spanned over 10 years. So obviously, guys come and go through that time. So that's kind of a tough one to answer. I don't, I don't really it, have a good was answer. It, was, there any, was there any guys that you sort of uh, remember thinking when you needed to know that they were around type of thing? Like they'd probably try and take you out or not really? Or was everyone just out for themselves? Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of who. Who was tough that way? I'd have to go back and look through some old names. It's hard for me to pull up off the top of my head. Um, there definitely was guys that I didn't like to race. Um, you know, guys that would rev their bike a lot or yell at you. Like, I would hate to race against Barsha. That kind of stuff ah, just uh, just drives me nuts, you know. Um, but I can't pull up any name of anybody. In you see, that Barsha seems to have something going on with Tomac at the moment. Don't they? they keep getting into... Yeah, they keep getting into each other, yeah. <laughs> all right cool um if you could give some advice to any amateur rider um that wants to go pro what would it be well uh the best advice i can give kind of like you know learn from people that have gone before you so uh i would say seek out advice from the best of your era right so go talk to stefan over there or if you're here talk to old pros yeah. Listen to these podcasts, you know, like, you know, and, and learn from their mistakes. Like I've said, I wish I would have found a, a better nutritionalist. I wish I would have had an old pro racer kind of steer me in the right direction with a program. How mm -hmm. much should I be riding? How many times a week? 
what specifically should I work on, um, all those kinds of things. Uh, there's so much to it, but I would try to find people that have been there and done that yeah. and get their advice. And, and there's a very different, th- you know, there's a big difference between a riding coach and a trainer. Mm-hmm. And they're, they're two completely separate things. They need to work together, but I would say really look at that. And, um, you know, kind of things I've mentioned, don't avoid conditions because you don't like them. Mm-hmm. Get out and ride in the mud. You know, look at how bad Ricky sucked in the mud. If you watch Mount Morris 97, he went in with like a 30-some point lead, crashed his – it was a mudder, crashed his brains out three, four, five, six times each moto and left with like a five-point lead. Mm. And he still won the championship. But my point is he went on then if you look back to 05, 05, 06 at Millville, he lapped the entire field in that mud race. So – Ricky took his he took his weakness and he turned it into a strength to where he was amazing at it, right? Uh, Fox Hills. I think he got his ass yeah. kicked pretty good over there uh, yeah. in the mud, right? So yeah. he, learned, he learned those lessons and he turned that into a strength. Yeah, that's 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 pretty cool when the top guys do that. Um I've got questions, a few more. Uh who were the best three riders you ever raced with and why? Jeremy, Jeremy for sure. Ricky for sure. Um, and uh, I don't want to get the wrong guy here. I mean, those two are 100% for sure. I mean, I want to say Wyndham for me. Wyndham was so good. He was so talented. It was frustrating. It was really frustrating. Yeah, James too. I, I guess James probably. I only raced him what one year though, because the next year he went to the other coast, and then he moved up. So I didn't get to. I didn't race with him a ton outdoors. I never even saw the guy. He was so <laughs> far out in front of me. Wyndham, I actually had some races with, but those guys, you know, they were just. They were so good. They would just. You, they had you beat mentally before you even went to the gate. Yeah. You know, and I, I tell people this all the time. Like I, I remember my rookie year, I got done with the Supercross main event, and I'm I'm watching the 250 guys come down the tunnel, and Jeremy comes down, and he's got this look in his eyes, like he's just looking through everybody. Mm-hmm. I, I've never seen like this focus. It was just crazy. I went, oh my gosh, look at that guy. No one has <laughs> no one has a chance. He's gonna kill him. Yeah. And he did, you know, I mean, he was just so good. He was good on the bike, but he was so good mentally. All those guys were. Mm-hmm. Um, it was just that after a while, you just sort of accepted that you weren't going to beat them. Yeah. It's almost like you could see that they believed that they were the best as well. Yeah. And that that's Very. everything. That's mm-hmm. everything. Right. I mean, mm-hmm. in, our, in this sport at that level, everybody's really good riders. Mm-hmm. Technically, they're very close. You know, guys will have strengths and weaknesses, but it comes down to right here. Mm-hmm. And the guys that can get this all screwed in and working right, those are the guys that have 10 world titles and mm-hmm. seven Supercross titles, you know. The whole package. Yep. yep. Uh, all right, just got a couple more. Um, you become a team manager too for Troy Lee Design Honda? Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did that come about, and did you enjoy it? And what does that ent- what did that entail? So, um, when I quit racing, I started working for a magazine over here, yeah. and I was doing that for a while, and that was a really nice transition for me because I still went and did some international races, and I'd write road trip stories about it. I was testing bikes, and it was a real nice step out of the sport for me. Um, somehow I got in a buddy of mine was doing some supermoto supermoto was really picking up momentum over here. So I did one, um, and, and really liked it. So then the next year I did a few more and I actually won a race. So then the following year, Troy hired me because the Troy Lee designs Red Bull Honda team was one of the premier teams over here. So he hired me to ride the 250. I won, I think six rounds that year, uh, had a big lead in the championship till I broke my arm, uh, which bumped me down to second in the standings overall um did i think i did two or three years with them 
doing that. And then they were trying to transition out of supermoto into supercross. And I was talking to Troy about it. He goes, yeah, man, he goes, I just need somebody that knows how supercross works and like how things should be run. And I need someone in here like that. And, um, I said, well, yeah, I'll, I'll do it. You know, like, and he goes, really? And we started talking and it just worked out. Um, and it was, it was a lot of basics, you know, they, the way, like I mentioned, the way the truck was set up, yeah. um, the riders that they had were very young at the time because they had a small budget. So just helping them build a good routine and, you know, some general outlines and parameters for what they need to do. Um, we had a great engine builder, a guy named Matt Jory. Um, and we actually, you know, in the two years that I was there, uh, the year before I came, they were struggling to make mains. The year I came there, we had Jake Moss, Jimmy Albertson, Sean Borkenhagen, and Chris Blose. We had guys in the main every single weekend. We had certain rounds where we had four guys inside the top ten. Um, and then Jake Outdoors and Chris, both the road 450, had a couple outdoor events. They did really well. Then the following year, we had Will Hahn and Cole Seeley. And then we brought over Ben Townley to race the Nationals on the 450. Yeah. And Cole and Will were on the podium every weekend. They were 2-3 at a couple rounds. Ben was uh, on the podium in the 450 class outdoors. He damn near won Redbud that year. Yeah. So on a budget that was about $800,000, $850,000 all in, we were competing with these factory teams that had multi-million dollar budgets, you know. Cool. So that was really fun to me. Going to the races on the weekends and, and being at the race, that was fun to me sitting in my cubicle during the week and working out Excel spreadsheets and right typing up contracts and making phone calls to sponsors. I hated that stuff, man. I hated it. That was not for me. I learned right away, like, okay, desk jobs aren't for me. And then my wife and I had kids and, uh, I was gone so much, you know, I'm gone every weekend. I'd take Sunday afternoon off when I got home from the race and then I'm back at the shop Monday. Like she never saw me. Kids yeah. were in bed by the time I got home, and I'm gone before they're up. And so we just said, or I said, this isn't, this isn't something I can do long term, you know. So that was the downside. Uh, but I, I did enjoy being at the races. It's the next best thing to being on the line, you know, being up in that manager's tower. Just you got so much adrenaline going through you, mm -hmm. and when the guys do well and the whole team is stoked, that's so fun. Yeah, it's pretty cool experience, then. Huh? Yeah, it was a neat experience. Learned a lot. What uh, riders do you enjoy watching ride now, race? Um, Kenny. I really like watching Kenny and Eli ride. Um, Kenny's so technically good on the bike. I've, I've been really enjoyed watching him. He's, he's kind of changing styles again where, where riders are seeing him just keeping their feet on the pegs a lot more through corners. He'll go through a rut even and just he'll never take his foot off the pegs. He'll sit, but his feet stay on the pegs um and eli's just such an animal you know to watch him go through the pack like he has like he did at the supercross last weekend it's just incredible yeah. um and then the, the other one guy that i'm really i really enjoy watching ride is jet lawrence um i know it's it didn't end well but that one race at anaheim earlier this year yeah. it just showed that that kid wants it so badly you know what i mean I, I that spoke volumes to me and if this nothing's ever a sure thing in this sport but like if i was going to bank money on a kid yeah. that's my guy Back in. i think he's he's got the talent he wants it yeah. he's got johnny o helping him so I, I mean i feel like all the pieces are in place he's got on a great team i mean so we'll see what happens that's pretty cool um i'm just going to finish up with uh what were your what are your social media usernames so that people can follow you on various platforms um yeah it's just at david pingry 101 uh, on instagram yeah. and then uh, i have a twitter account but I, I don't even i mean i think it's the same it's at david pingry 101 um but what i'd really rather people do is follow the whiskey throttle show uh, just, about say any show -outs. just about to say any shout outs any shout outs i was just about to say that yeah, that's been sort of my last project that I really like doing. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, I feel like that there was something missing in this sport where, um, 
you know, the, the heroes that have sort of come before us, there wasn't a good digital catalog of their careers and their lives. Yeah. And so our interviews are, man, it's a deep dive. It's, it's four hours, but you're going to know everything from the very beginning to what they're doing now. Yeah. And, you know, like, uh, I'll give you a great example. We had Marty Smith on last year. And so now to have that, now that Marty's passed away, it's like, oh, thank God we got him on. Yeah. So that people that don't know him, they can go back and watch that and see what an amazing guy he was. You know what I mean? And know what he did and why he was so good. And um, I feel like this is something that it's almost like a service to the sport, you know. So uh, we've had a lot of fun with that. At Whiskey Throttle Show, if you're looking for that on Instagram or uh, our Twitter is at W underscore throttle underscore show, which is a real shit show. You can just type search out Whiskey Throttle Show. It should come up. Is that, right? is, that on the, is that what's on your cap as well? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah we got hats and t-shirts and all that stuff. So we've had a lot of fun doing that. That's really cool. Uh, David, really appreciate your time. Grateful. Yeah, mate. No, I appreciate you having me on. Best of luck with your show. And uh, when it comes out, let me know, and I'll, I'll boost it on my social media for you as well. That'd be awesome. I really appreciate it. Thanks ever so much for your time. Yeah, you betcha. Have a great night. Thank you. Top, right. top man. Thanks. Cheers, David. Bye.